Jesus worked miracles in the Jesus worked miracles in the early church after he was back at the right hand of the Father to enable them to help people to win souls and to build his church. Great miracles continued to happen in the book of Acts as the kingdom of God advanced. The Bible says the law and the prophets were until John, and since that time, the good news of the gospel is being preached, and everyone is forcing his way into it. Jesus Christ said that. And so after John the Baptist, he started his ministry, and he was leading the charge of the kingdom of God. The new covenant already was beginning to dry, and as he went, he drove back darkness, and we went through his miracles. I don't think we got all of them, but we got most of them. And you could see from those miracles and can see from those miracles that he was driving back the kingdom of Satan and destroying his works by healing people, delivering people, setting people free from demon possession, opening blinded eyes. He was undoing the work of the devil, or as it says, he came to destroy the works of the devil. And after he went back to the right hand of the Father, he continued to do the same thing through the early church leaders. And people said, well, it was those apostles. No, they were apostles, okay, but there's many other leaders, deacons, and those that the Lord was using. And today he's still using us can you say amen to undo the works of the devil to destroy the works of the devil the devil thought he had Tony and was trying to kill him had him right in a very bad position but the Lord Jesus showed up can you say amen and he's still delivering people still working miracles and still undoing the work of the devil but you just got to get in the Word of God and find out what the work of the devil is and what the work of the Holy Spirit is there's a major difference (laughs) <laughs> Don't get the two mixed up. Great miracles continue to happen in the book of Acts as the kingdom of God advanced. In Acts chapter 12, verse 1, it was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, extent, um, intended to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. When he saw that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter. So he arrested Peter, had him thrown in jail, and look what he did to him. After arresting him, he, had, he put him in prison, handing him over to the guards by four, uh, had them over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers. In other words, he was chained and watched by four soldiers uh, as a group, and then it was four of those groups watching him. There's no way Peter was going anywhere. He was in jail for good, or so Herod thought. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to the guarded to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. He was going to execute Peter. The church pretty much would have been over. Jesus had three close disciples. Uh, John, James, and Peter, and it already killed uh, James, so he's going for the head. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. How many know that's always always our uh, deliverance right there? Prayer. This is a praying church. (laughs) If you're going to be a part of this church, you need to be a praying person. Come on. Say amen. Amen. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Well, does it do any good? Well, let's see. Verse 7. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said. And the chains fell off. Peter's wrist just automatically fell off. (laughs) Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening he thought he was seeing a vision he could not believe it have you ever had the Lord work such a great miracle in your life you're looking right at it but you cannot believe it (laughs) and so this is the same guy that tried walking on water and wound up sinking and now he's full of the Holy Spirit and God is doing unbelievable things in his life as he obeys uh, the Lord verse 11 then Peter came to himself Uh, And said, now I know without a doubt that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were anticipating. Yeah, he could believe without a doubt because he's standing outside the jail. (laughs) The angel broke him out. I believe he can still do that in modern America. He can break you out of jail. Verse 12, 
When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. These people meant business. They prayed until Peter knocked on the door. Right there would be a good place to say amen. amen. Okay. The Lord totally reversed Satan's evil plan with a miracle. Herod was going to kill the guy. But he didn't. As a matter of fact, we sh shared last week how an angel killed Herod. You don't mess with God's people. I know people don't believe that. They don't get that. A lot of Christians live in fear. I do not. The people, well, I don't have anybody harassing me, but anybody who wants to harass me, they need to be the ones worried, not me. Okay. They that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Don't mess with me. And nobody should be messing with you either if you're a born-again believer. And you're living for God. Acts chapter 9 verse 1. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. And so uh, Herod wasn't their own pro only problem. They had this crazy Jew named Saul of Tarsus. <laughs> that was trying to kill them all. He helped kill Stephen, you know, by holding his garments while they stoned him to death. The guy had a murderous heart in him, claiming to be a, a mighty religious leader. So he went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue in Damascus so that if he found any those or any there who belonged to the way, the, the Christian faith called the way there, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. So he was out not just in, in Israel, uh, he was all the, way, all the way up in Damascus trying to arrest Christians to bring them to what he called justice, Saul of Tarsus. And so, I mean, you know, God can take care of your enemies. And he can even convert them and make them preach the gospel alongside you. <laughs> this is one of the most amazing stories, I think, ever in the Bible or anywhere else. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven shined around him. So what is the Lord doing? He's undoing the work of the devil. He's transforming people into godly missionaries and preachers all along the way. And as I said, I think last week that the greatest miracle of all is the miracle of salvation. He said, well, I don't believe in the miracles. Well, then you're not, you can't be saved. Okay. So this conversion right here of Saul of Tarsus to St. Paul is one of the greatest miracles you'll ever see anywhere. This is a greater miracle than a broken bone being healed or a cancer being healed. Somebody say amen. amen. Verse 4, he fell on the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? You see, the Lord took it personally. When we are coming against his people, he takes it personally. You're not persecuting them, you're persecuting me. Verse 5, who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. So Jesus was just sitting by the right hand of the Father. He was quite active in the early church, and I want you to know he's still quite active today. He speaks to me and talks to me all the time. And uh, right before, uh, uh, well, the, they, when COVID hit, they were shutting down all the churches. And I pretty much made up my mind. The government has no right to tell anybody to shut down a church. And so I'm thinking we're going to have church. And on the way to a staff meeting that morning, Jesus Christ showed up as I was driving uh, uh, down the expressway. I mean, no, if... Jesus is ever going to show up. You want to be when you're driving on 40 out here in Knoxville, you know. And so he was there in my vehicle with me. And he says, I want you to, and I didn't see him, but I heard him. And he said, I want you to submit to authority and live stream these services and put them on the radio. And you'll reach more people now uh, then than you are now. And so he spoke to me, and that's what we did. And that's why we had several people graduating of his class, they took it by live stream. Could you say amen? And uh, God knows what he's doing. We just need to hear from Jesus. He's not slumbering. He's praying at the right hand of the Father, and when you need him, you'll show up. Amen. Verse 6. Now, does this help anybody? I believe he sent me to build your faith from the Word of God. Verse 6. Now, get up and go into the city. You will be told what you must do. Yeah, I'm not telling you everything now. 
uh, but I'm still on the phone. I'm going to keep informing you. And that's the same with all of us. He never tells us everything way in advance. It'd be too much for us to handle. Amen. So he gives us what we need when we need it. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anything. Saul got up from the ground. But when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. He was blind. So they led him by the hand to Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. The first thing he did was do a three-day fast. That's what Jews did. When they had a big issue in their lives, they would fast. Matter of fact, they fasted two days a week anyway. And then Saul, uh, <clears throat> Saul was the church's number one enemy. But... He became the church's number one preacher. You talking about a miracle. <laughs> That's a miracle intervention by Jesus Christ. Let me pray and he'll intervene in your life. And in the lives of your children and your family members and your loved ones and the people you work with. Acts chapter 9 verse 10. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. Well it was those 12 apostles. They were doing all these miracles. And when they died the power died with them. The power that was anointing them was the Holy Spirit. And if you're dumb enough to believe the Holy Spirit's dead. Uh, you really got a problem. Because you can't be saved without the Holy Spirit. Birthing you into the kingdom of God. So no the Holy Spirit didn't die. And it wasn't just the apostles. Here you got Ananias. We never heard of him before. And here God is using him in a miraculous way to help develop the greatest preacher who probably ever lived. Uh, of course, there would be a contest between me and St. Paul. <clears throat> Life hard on that one. <laughs> in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. Now, he was not one of the twelve. He was just a God-called man that was obeying and serving God just like many of you. And hopefully all of you. The Lord called him in a vision. In an eyes. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas, of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying. Well, everybody knew that name, Saul of Tarsus. So this guy went into a panic. He said, wait a minute. You want me? This guy's killing Christians. <laughs> Verse 13, Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority, for he knew it was coming, from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. And you want me to go over and talk to him? Verse 15, the Lord said to Ananias, Go. This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. Verse 17, then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Let me know we need to obey the Lord. Amen. Many times we miss out on great blessings because we're afraid. Uh, be afraid not to obey. If you want to be afraid, be afraid of disobeying Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't be afraid of people. Amen. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it, placed his hands on Saul. And he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit he said, you met Jesus Christ out there on that Damascus road. And he says, the same Lord that spoke to you has spoken to me and told me to come here and pray that you might receive your sight and that you might be filled with the mighty Holy Spirit. And that's what Ananias did. He prayed for him and he received his sight. Amen. You see, Saul then received his sight and was baptized in water as a Christian. He went from being the church's number one enemy to the greatest preacher probably the the church has ever had and that can happen in 2023 Amen. and that's what I pray for many of the enemies of the church but we got a lot of them secular humans and Marxists you know they're attacking us and telling lies on us and doing everything they can to destroy us but Jesus Christ is still Jesus Christ and I'm believing he's going to show up and knock some of these people in the dirt 
And when they get up, they're going to be born-again believers that's going to preach the gospel. How <laughs> I many you know the Word of God will build our faith if we take a little time to get into it? God still uses visions and anoints hands. Can you say glory to God? And Lord, I just ask you to let us see visions and anoint our hands. And I was excited to learn that I have authority over Satan's demonized servants of disobedience. I learned this from St. Paul, the old Saul. Okay. We today have great authority over those who want to destroy us and want to hinder the gospel and shut down the church. And we're, we're not, we don't run from anyone. We don't run from a fight. We run to it in the name of Jesus. Our, our confidence is not in us, but our confidence is in him. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me and enables me. Acts chapter 13, verse 6. This is the old Saul of Tarsus, St. Paul. They traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. In verse 7, the, the uh, proconsul, the governor, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. He was interested in this new uh, <clears throat> Christian group, and he wanted to know what they had to say. But Elamus, a sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. This, he, this guy was a Jew, but he was full of the devil. He was a sorcerer, and he was doing everything he could to hinder Paul's ministry to this governor. Verse 9, then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elamus and said, You are a child of the devil <laughs> and an enemy of everything that is right. Well, that's kind of where he was. <laughs> Can you say amen? And the Lord changed him, so this Elamus needed to see a miracle. And Paul went blind, so he thought, Well, if it's good for me, it's good for Elamus. <laughs> I suppose, look at this. You're a child of the devil, an enemy of everything that is right. You're full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. <clears throat> uh, will, you, will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You're going to be blind <laughs> for time. Is it good enough for me, buddy? Is it good enough for you? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You're going to be blind, and for a time you'll be unable to see the light of the sun for a time temporarily until you get right with God, buddy. I don't know if you ever got right with God or not, but he sure had the opportunity to. Amen. Immediately mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Can you see how the church has always been marching against evil and driving it back by converting one person at a time or by delivering one person at a time or shutting evil people down? Like Herod and this guy here. I mean, the kingdom of God is still moving through America and around this world. And if we give up so much, God, what's going to happen? We're wimping out. God sent me here to tell you we ain't wimping out. We're not wimping out. The stronger they get, the stronger we're going to get. The bolder they get, the bolder we're going to get. We're preaching the gospel. And when the Word of God says it's sin, I don't care if they have a national holiday to celebrate it. We're still going to call it what it is, sin. We do not celebrate sin. And all those who promote it and all those who persecute Christians are going to pay the ultimate price sooner or later. And then they're going to wind up in a devil's lake of fire for all eternity. They need to get converted and join us in preaching this gospel while they still can. Yeah. When the proconsul saw what happened, he believed. You see, if we had more power of the power of God in our lives instead of being such wimps, we'd see more people converted. Look at this. When the proconsul, the governor, saw what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. He became a believer because he saw a miracle. Born-again believers still have this kind of authority to advance the kingdom of God against evil deceivers. I discovered that many years ago, and buddy, it changed my whole outlook on life. It changed my ministry because I began to realize I have authority over all these people that's coming against me and trying to hinder me and shut me down. I began to take that authority, and God began to get them out of my way left and right. Some of them are in the graveyard. Amen. 
You don't mess with God's people. But if God's people don't know it, they're in the dark. You need to know who you are and the authority you have. Uh, Paul didn't have any power that you do not have. He had the same Holy Spirit you have. It is not those apostles. Paul, Paul wasn't even one of them anyway. He wasn't one of the twelve. I mean, preachers preach stuff, and it's obviously wrong. All you got to do is read the Bible. And Adias wasn't one of the twelve. <laughs> and he helped convert Saul of Tarsus. Baptized him as a Christian. Prayed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He wasn't one of the twelve. Acts chapter 14, verse 8. In Lystra there was a man crippled in his feet, who was lame from birth and had never walked. Paul was preaching and almost had to be preaching healing or what would have given the guy faith. He was a pagan. Verse 6, he listened to Paul as he was speaking. He almost had to be talking about Jesus the healer, Savior, Lord, and healer. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed. There wasn't anything to see there except the, he saw the anointing of God on him. And God has given to me with it. A lot of times I see the anointing of God on people. And I know that, you know, if I pray for them and I can get them agreement, they can have the miracle they're looking for. Sometimes you don't really see it with your eyes, but you discern it with your spiritual eyes. Verse 10, and called out, stand on your feet, stand up on your feet. And Paul looked at him, and he ordered him to stand on his feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. Amen. You see, once Paul saw the faith, he had to have faith to call it out. And sometimes you don't want to call things out because you're afraid you might be wrong. The devil's telling you you're wrong, and you can really miss a great opportunity by listening to the devil. But you, we all need to pray until we really know that we know that we know this Lord before the Lord before we open our mouth. Amen. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. We were met by, I want to just show you, uh, driving back darkness, driving out Satan, turning his uh, kingdom upside down, undoing his evil work, setting people free. The church is supposed to be doing that now. The church in America is basically dead. In so-called Pentecostal churches and full gospel churches, and many of them are backpedaling on the gospel and on the miracle power of God, and then many of them don't believe any more in the power of God than other denominational churches. Men, we better wake up. America's in big trouble. The, this nation and the world needs to see Jesus Christ in his full power. Yes. I'm not wimping out. How about you? We, we, but everybody in this church has been healed of something. And some of it's serious stuff. Thank you, Jesus. So, this slave girl in Acts 16, 16, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. You see, slavery wasn't invented by the United States. You know, it goes all the way back to the beginning of time. Little Joseph was a slave. Can you say something? Amen. It's a good thing to say. And so this girl was a slave, and uh, she had a gift, a demonic gift, by which a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. Verse 18, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. That's by the power of God. Yes, you can do that. When the demon was cast out, guess what? She lost her ability to tell fortunes. So her owners were quite upset. <laughs> so the owners had Paul and Silas arrested and thrown, thrown in jail. Acts chapter 16, verse 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were preaching, were praying rather, praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. I mean, you believe that was an accidental earthquake. No, that was God Almighty. 
He can still send some earthquakes if we need one. Now, I don't misunderstand. Earthquakes happen basically because of the curse that Adam and Eve got us into by sinning. And uh, what a lot of times insurance, call, insurance companies call the act of God is just the curse at work. But if God wants to, he can shake things up. Amen. A violent earthquake <clears throat> uh, the, uh, that the foundation of the prison, uh, foundations were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everybody's chains came off. You see, Paul and Silas were in jail because they cast the devil out of the young fortune teller. This was a sovereign act of God. He, he will not forget us when we're in trouble for doing the right thing. Now, notice what Paul and Silas were doing in prison. They were sitting there pouting and mad at God. <clears throat> Is that what it says? They were praying and singing. <laughs> they were worshiping God. And so no matter what mess you're in, you're praying and singing. Come on, get that straight. You're starting to, it's not sitting around whining and crying, oh my God. You're, you're praying and singing and meditating on the word of God. They were not mad or pouting, but singing uh, in, their, in their trouble. And all of a sudden, their chains fell off. This great earthquake hit. There's no earthquake that can take chains off of you. That had to be God. Amen. The earthquake, he just shook the place. Uh, it wasn't really an earthquake. It was God shaking the place that caused those doors to fly open. And then the jailer got saved. Y'all pay attention yet? You see how the kingdom of God, from the time of Jesus Christ all the way to right now, he's been working miracles to open people's eyes, to deliver them from Satan's addictions and strongholds, and to undo the works of the devil, to destroy the works of the devil. If we'll get on board, we can do it right now, every one of us. You can lay hands on people at work, and you miss, you must, and they'll be healed and delivered, and you just pray for them, and don't worry about it, go on your, about your business and let God fix it. Got to fix them if you'll pray for them. And then you can't go around just praying for people that don't want it. You've got to get their permission. Yeah. Acts 19, 11, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. God did extraordinary miracles through Chuck. God did extra or extraordinary miracles through Barry. Why can't that be possible? We have the same Holy Spirit. Paul wasn't anything special. He's a murderer. <laughs> at least helping kill Christians right. arrest them that's who and he admits it later on he says man I, uh, I'm the least of all apostles of course uh, they weren't just the 12 apostles they're still apostles today Amen. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. You see, the Holy Spirit was still driving back darkness and destroying Satan's work with the anointing of the Holy Spirit that actually went into Paul's handkerchief and apron. It wasn't just preachers. It wasn't just really uh, evangelists or any of that. It was the anointing of the Holy Spirit, in this case, on handkerchiefs and, and aprons. <laughs> Y'all awake yet? I'm going to start having the ushers and greeters pass out communion cups every Sunday with coffee in them. <laughs> the Holy Spirit was still driving back darkness, and he was still doing extraordinary miracles. Acts 20, verse 9, seated in a window was a young man named uh, uh, Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on and on. Paul <laughs> put him to sleep. And then he, well, he went to sleep. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. The Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, was still destroying the works of the devil. Satan, no doubt, was instrumental in his death. But Paul, in the name of Jesus, raised him from the dead. He was dead, and Paul prayed, and then he wasn't dead. You see, it, 
is appointed unto man once to die, but it wasn't this young man's appointed time. How do I know that? Because if it was, he would have stayed dead. <laughs> so don't let the Lord shorten you. Don't let the devil shorten your life by one day. Acts chapter twenty, verse twenty-two. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem. This is Paul, not knowing uh, what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. You see, he knew he was headed for trouble, but he went anyway. And from there he went all the way to preach to Caesar (laughs) as a prisoner. Acts 27 verse 23, last night, now he's on the ship going to... Rome to stand before Caesar. Last night an angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve, stood stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. So you can give a witness is what it's all about. You must stand trial before Caesar. God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So they were in the middle of this storm in a boat in the middle of the sea. And it was about to sink. Or so it appeared angels showed up and told Paul. said, you can tell everybody they're going to be okay. They're going to lose the ship, but they're going to be okay. Verse 26. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. Paul and the ship. We're sailing through a bad storm, but the angel let him know. How I many you know God can let you know that in the middle of your storm, he's got it? Amen. You're going to make it. Uh, <clears throat> so Paul and the ship uh, were in a bad storm, but the angel let him know the Lord had everything under control. He's got your boat under control. Some of us are waiting or sailing through a storm right now. Uh, Rhonda and uh, 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 Tony been sailing through a storm all week because Paul proved to be a mighty miracle working man of God and had godly wisdom they put him in charge he, they put the prisoner in charge of the ship and they started doing everything he told them to do <laughs> listen God can use you no matter what they did what he said. You see, he saved the day, and they let him do it. Acts 28, verse 7. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. He survived the shipwreck. He swam to shore, building a fire. And uh, the most deadly snake evidently known to men to come out of the fire and bit him. And the natives sat back watching for him to die. And he just sat there by the fire roasting marshmallows. They shall take up serpents accidentally. <laughs> Can you say amen? He didn't mean to take it up, but he did, and he lived through it without any effect. Acts 28, verse 8. Now, this is Publius, the official of the island, the governor of this island. Now, I'm calling him governor because that's what we understand. His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him. And after prayer, placed his hands on him and healed him. Says he healed him. Actually, the Holy Spirit healed him when he laid hands on him. Uh, When we lay hands on people, the Lord can work that miracle through us. Verse 9, Paul went to see him and after prayer, placed his hands on him and healed him. And uh, when, you see, when this happened, verse 9, the rest of the sick on the island came and were cured rest means all of them so he on his way to prison he's still driving back darkness and destroying the works of the devil let's stay